Oh, happy Memorial Day weekend, right? Um, the theme for this month is spiritual living through creativity. Do you feel creative at times? Yeah. Did you pick your own favorite color? Or did somebody give it to you? Or did you borrow somebody else's? <laughs> Who dressed you this morning? No, don't answer. <laughs> Living Your Joy is the title of my talk this morning. And um, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and this weekend we celebrate all the men and women and their family members who keep us safe and so that we may continue to experience this thing called freedom that we enjoy in this country of ours, this great country of ours. So let's honor anyone that's served. Has any, is anyone in service here? Uh, could they stand, please? Could you stand if you've been in service to our country? Let's hear it. Thank you. We would like to thank you for the service that you provided so that we can experience this thing called freedom. Is there anyone who has a service member in their family? Could you please stand? Because we'd like to acknowledge you, too. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Because you had to spend time away. Your loved one was away doing service. And you didn't experience holidays. You didn't experience birthdays. You didn't experience 4th of July or whatever holiday. You had to experience that away from your family. And that's a sacrifice that you made indirectly. You didn't have that choice. It just was part of the family experience. And a lot of people have experienced that and never get acknowledged for the times that they missed. So at least acknowledging that we acknowledge that, you know, that's a sacrifice that we've all, that they had to make in their family. I came across this on the internet and I thought it was apropos. This weekend, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to buy some carnations and go to one of the nearby cemeteries and walk through the sections for soldiers. And when I find a grave that has no flowers, I'll leave a carnation and say a prayer for that soldier and the family of that person who for some reason could not bring their soldier flowers today, this weekend. I will pray for our country and all who serve or have served for their families who also serve by losing precious days, weeks, months spent with their loved ones who are off serving, preserving the peace and the freedom we have in this country. And I'll pray for the families who have paid the ultimate price, whose loved ones have passed, were taken captive and never returned. And I'll pray for anyone who may still be held in captivity and thinks perhaps they're forgotten. They are not forgotten and we pray for them. We will never forget why we are here, why we are free, and for whom we are in eternally indebted. So let's hear it. Let's just... I think that this, this weekend is, is, and if you listen close, you can hear the drag boats yeah. zipping along the river from here. And, you know, we celebrate because we have a lot to celebrate, don't we? Don't we take it? We take it for granted sometimes. So, okay, I'd like to lighten it up now. <laughs> I'd like to bring my little friend here out to you. Hi. Look at him. This is, this is my little friend that I got at a garage sale. Had him. I've had him for several years. Would you like to say hi? Hi. He's my bobble dog. What's his name? His name is Brownie. <laughs> That's original, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, it was other, other than that than doggy, <laughs> right? Well, this little guy brings me so much joy. When I'm not feeling in joy, I have him in my office, and I just touch his head, and I'm like, <laughs> but it's the little things, isn't it? It's the little things that bring us joy. It's, um, 
I'll just put him up there and let him, let him go, right? I had him in the back of my car for a while. Just, but he got a neck, kind of a neck sore for doing that. <laughs> I saw the Dick Van Dyke, um, a, a, a interview with Dick Van Dyke several years ago uh, on TV. And he has a new book out called My Lucky Life. And he says this, these are three things you need to live a joy-filled life. One, find someone to love. I found someone to love. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. And until you do, love yourself, <laughs> right? Till you find your own brownie. <laughs> there he is. Love yourself at depth. Because it's through self-love you start radiating love and all of a sudden people, you walk into a room and you radiate love and people want to be around that. Say, oh, I feel something when I'm around you. I don't even know what it is, but I like the feeling of being around love. And when you're generating love, but when you're in a I need love mode, it's the opposite direction. You walk in and you suck people's energy <laughs> instead of radiating your own. Number two, find something to hope for. Find something to hope for. What is your dream? Look at the grounds out here. The spiritual gardeners <laughs> have found a dream and are expressing it in planting little things that grow. And they love it so much, you can see the love in the growth. And we, are, we get to be the uh, beneficiaries of their love. Isn't that great? So find a little corner where you can plant something in your life to grow. But si find something to hope for. What is your dream? And if you don't have a dream, have your dream to find a dream. <laughs> That can be your dream until you find one. And at first, that's all I could do. I didn't know I could have my own dream. Me? Well, I had a dream that was for my parents to re retire successfully and, and not want. And, but that was for them. Or my siblings to have good jobs and families. And, but that was for them. What did I want? I didn't know that it was okay for me to have a dream. And someone charged me with writing a hundred things down that I wanted. And I, I charge you with that. Write down a hundred dreams that are just for you. Your dreams. I'll tell you, after about 20, you start recycling dreams. <laughs> You're like, I'd like to travel everywhere. <laughs> Holland and fill in the blank, Hawaii. And you start listing all the places you want to go. The car you'd like to drive. The relationship you'd like to experience. Maybe some things you'd like to forget. Maybe some things you'd like to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to have something to live for that, that we are creatively processing all the time. So. Find someone or something to love, and in the meantime, love yourself. Find something to hope for. What is your dream? And the third is find something to do and live your life's purpose. It's great to dream, but we have to have manifested dreams so we can cross the dream off and start a new list. And when I came into this teaching, I started crossing things off because things were happening for me. It's such a great feeling. You see, I'm a list maker. I, I, I you know, bag it, tag it, get it home. You know, I, I, if, I, if I go out to do something, and let's say I do something that's not on my list, I'll add it to my list so I can cross it off. Do you do that? Do you do that? Because I want to see that accomplishment, right? Oh, I stopped and picked up my mail. That wasn't even on my list. Oh my goodness. Write it down, cross it off. But it, it feels good, doesn't it, to accomplish? So my little dog that I found at, at the rummage sale, it was a church rummage sale, and it was in a pile of junk. It was just thrown in there. And I said, you know what? 
I set it out, and I just, I just, I just loved. I just loved watching, watching the the, the bobble. I was just like, yeah, spirit always says yes. <laughs> yep. What did? What was your dream? Yep. You could do that too. <laughs> I was just like mesmerized by my little dog. So. <laughs> It's not the troubles that trouble you, it's the way that you react to them. It's not what happens to you, it's how you deal what, with what happens to you. And it's okay to get upset. Anger, when used in the right way, is a very motivating force and can be used in a very positive way. It's when we act on our anger that creates more challenge that we have to make amends for, that we have a challenge. When anger can move you in a way that says, I am mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And you change the way something happened to you and never put yourself in that situation again, that you change lifetimes, if you believe in that sort of thing. Well, we'll get to that later. What if you could choose not to let the troubles get to you? What if you could work your way through them while remaining positive and joyful? Life's difficulties do not need your help. They are plenty difficult on their own without you adding to them. So are you part of the solution or are you part of the challenge? And it's okay at first to be part of the challenge because if you look at the common denominator in all your challenges, You've probably been involved. <laughs> Oops. So make the choice not to add to them. Acknowledge their reality. Deal effectively with them. But don't allow them to pull you down. You are so much greater than your challenges. Your challenges can be stumbling blocks or stepping stones. Step up on that one, and I am better because I get it. I got the message, and I heeded it. It's when we don't see it, the, the pearl of wisdom that it has for us, that all of a sudden it's a stumbling block again. You ever trip twice on a stumbling block? You're like, well, I thought I handled that. <laughs> Apparently I did not. <laughs> that has some more information for me. It doesn't mean that you, you know, have a pity party. Uh, you can if you want. I was the pity party king. I'd bring a kegger to the pity party, <laughs> a, a kegger of pity to the pity party, and call all the friends that would affirm how bad it was, right? <laughs> and then I realized that I was just bringing them down too. So the way you feel is the way you choose to feel. Choose to feel powerful. Choose to feel in control. Choose to feel purposeful, abundant, and joyful because this is what you are made of. This is the heart of you. You were made in the image and likeness of the in eternal creative wisdom of the universe. And unfortunately, some of us have recreated that in our own image and likeness and saying that God is only a man. God is all human beings and everything that is. I don't want to limit it by just saying that God is a person. God is every person, everything that is. So, the living spirit in you is stronger than any of your challenges, any of your troubles you'll ever encounter. There is a part of you that will never know hurt, Never know fear, never know hunger, never know shame, anything. It is that part of us that is eternal. So I've come up with a list of 10 ideas for you to live a more joy and carefree life. These are 10 little things to get you to be creative that if you can do just a couple of these things you know all ten you know that'd be great but these are just ideas I came up with that worked for me when I want to be creative so 
number one is carve out regular time for your dream. If you're not spending some time on what your dreams are, if they get pushed to the back of the stove, of the burner, and they've fallen off the back of the stove, they never get the attention that they need. If you're a morning person, get up an hour early and create as the sun rises. If you're a night owl, stay up late and get it done. Either way, give yourself a regular shot of at least 30 minutes per day. An hour is better, but 15 to 20 minutes each side of your day will work. Just start writing stuff down that you want to be, do, and have. And write it as if it's already so. I am an artist. I am a musician. I am a writer. I am a creative genius. Because you are a creative genius. Each one of us is a creative genius. We do things like no one else can. Because it's you. You're doing it. You paid a lot of spiritual coin to sit in the seat you're sitting in today. To be a manifest being in this universe ain't cheap, metaphysically. <laughs> so let's spend it well. Let's experience this for all it's worth, right? I don't want to look back and go, well, I wish I would have, could have, should have, right? I want to look back and go, wow, I did it right, man. <laughs> I did that lifetime right, you know? That was a good one. That was a good one. I went to that church I love, you know? That sort of thing. You want to feel that. So number two, figure out your sole purpose in life. This is the larger job in your life. It's not a task per se, but some more general gift that you are meant to give to others, such as wake people up to the power of nature or remind people of their compassion. It could be to uncomfort, uh, uncover simply by journaling something or even meditating on the question. You know, I wake up and I say, what can I do for other people this morning? What can I do to make people's life better? And in the process of that, my life has purpose and I get given to because you're a, a conduit through which the infinite flows. And once you're a conduit through which it flows, the universe says, I got to take her, send it in. <laughs> it's when we dam stuff and we block our inner flow that things stagnate. You ever seen a, 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 a river that's been dammed? It backs up. Everything dries up downstream and everything clogs up upstream. That's why when you go, oh, bless it. <laughs> When you say, damn, you put a damn unconsciousness there. So I've trained myself to say, God bless it. <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> but think about it. When you want to go to that side, go to the other side. Swing the pendulum to the positive and watch what happens. Okay, number three. Recognize five time wasters and end them. If you are compuls compulsively checking your email or cell phone, this is for you. It's always up. I can't talk right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of something. If you feel like you have to read the paper all the way through, this is for you, right? I can't miss anything. I want to get to the end of the internet and start over. <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 click. So just see. Are you answering the phone for people who just want to have a pity party with you? And you know who they are. They're usually your family <laughs> or your closest friends. You don't understand what happened to me. I'm like, voicemail. <laughs> I'll call you back <laughs> right before I go to bed. <laughs> but no, know when something is zapping your energy and go, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to put myself in, I'm not going to say yes to things that I should have said no to just because I'm a yes person. Saying yes to everything is saying no to yourself. And this took me a long time because I want to please everybody. And I realized that saying no to certain things was saying yes to my own schedule. And I could go back and re-yes re something and go, you know, I do have the time to do that. 
But if I say yes to everything, I don't have time for myself. So watch what you say yes to. Because the universe always says, yes. <laughs> yes. It's challenging. Let me show you how challenging it can be. Yes. <laughs> so turn it around for yourself. Number four, withdraw from situations and relationships that are time wasters. Now, again, it's going to be challenging to tell, tell your, your family, oh, I'm not going to be coming for Christmas this year. There's other places I'd like to be. What? <laughs> but if, if your family isn't supporting what you believe in and is treating you like a doormat, maybe it's better just to send a card this year. You know, I used to go and spend a week with family during Christmas and, you know, be at their house, captive, <laughs> hostage for a week, you know, and I realized uh, I'm going to have my own hotel room somewhere with a rental car where I can get away when I need to. Well, if the kids are coming over, I'm out of here. I love your kids. I love them for about five minutes. <laughs> And this isn't to say that you don't spend time, it's just that you don't waste time in other people's agendas. Look at what makes sense to you. Five, find a support buddy or a group. This is simply an ally or a group of them who really get behind you and your dream. There are like-minded people everywhere when you look for them, right here in this center. You are amongst family here who want to support you in your dream. Anybody that you tell your dream to and they go, why would you want to do that? Isn't part of your support group. <laughs> you want the people that go, absolutely, I see you doing that. How can I support you in that? Call me every day and I'll remind you of your greatness. Those are the people we want around us, right? Six, make a creative workspace that you love. You need place for your dream. Now, you have place for your clutter. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. Look at my garage. Boy, look at the closet. Look at that junk drawer. Just keep it closed. <laughs> my house looks great, but just don't look in any drawers or closets or in my garage, right? But carve out a space for your dream. Have some watercolors and crayons there where you do your 15 to 20 minutes every morning and every evening and just, just color something. Just use that other side of your brain, right? A great creative workspace can be a separate room or a curtained off corner in your living space that has tools you need, plus inspirational helpers like visual props, pictures, quotations, a vision board, a treasure map, you find something in a, in, a, in a magazine that you love, cut it out and put it on your wall to remind yourself of your greatness. Number seven, keep power bars or shakes or something in your creative workspace so you don't have that, you know, um, halt, <laughs> hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. That's when I experience a challenge, halt, right? Don't get in those moods. Feed yourself properly with something that, that actually nourishes you. Cliff bars, lunar bars, power bars, spirulina shakes, and the like all provide great bursts of energy when you're burning the midnight oil or the early morning uh, catching the worm. Don't forget them. These honestly give you sustained energy that caffeine won't. Just an idea. And I'm calling it on myself. I love my coffee in the morning, right? Dedicate a weekend to declutter your home and create workspace. Well, some of us might take a little longer, some not so long. It might be an ongoing project. You know, it's spring. It's time for cleaning. You know, identify a small space that you can do quickly and that will motivate you to do more. Don't take on the whole garage in an hour. <laughs> you know, you'll never, it just seems like you'll just get it all out and then you'll put it all back. But maybe that's a start. Just look at where you can, can change something. And nine, 
Start a dream savings account set up just for financing the stuff you love in your life. Pay yourself first. Tithe to yourself as well as your spiritual center, <laughs> wherever you're motivated to give. But give yourself an account that you can go and play with that gives you, and just start with a little bit, you know, five bucks at a time and watch it grow, but dedicate it to your dream and watch what happens. And number 10, bring your lunch to work and spend your lunch hour working on your dream. And if you don't work, or if you're retired, carve out some time during your normal eating time and say, I'm going to eat for 15 minutes. I'm going to work on my dream for 15 minutes while I eat. Because you can do two things at once. Most, most ladies know how to do that. Guys, come on, get on board. Multitask. We can do this. <laughs> so close the door on what you don't want. This isn't to deny that it's there. It's not to give it any more power, right? If energy flows where our attention goes, find yourself, if you find yourself putting energy in what you don't want, don't beat yourself up, just acknowledge, hey, you know what? That's not positive. I'm going to turn towards what I do want and walk in the direction of your dreams, right? So in conclusion, find someone to love. And until you find your own brownie, Love yourself, love yourself. And from that love and overflow, it won't matter if anybody else is in your life because you love yourself so much, right? And then you have something to offer. Two, find something to hope for. What is your dream? What would you love to do? Maybe you're doing it. Can you make the best even better? And number three, find something to do. Live the purpose that you manifested into this plane of existence. All of us came with a huge idea. And we're doing it if we know it or not. But when we pay attention to the reason that we manifested and start encouraging that dream, that purpose, Watch the infinite back you in ways you may have never acknowledged before. And so it is. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a second and do a spiritual mind treatment. That's a scientific form of prayer. If you'd like to just close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you, take a soft flower on the beautiful, or a soft focus on the beautiful flowers. Soft flower on the beautiful focus or the candles that we have up here, to just bring yourself to that place where your soul is listening. Let's remember who we are. Just taking in a deep cleansing breath and letting it exhale as naturally as your body knows how to do. I invite you to remember and bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you believe the creative wisdom of the universe is. Whatever it is for you, what is your idea of God, source energy, Christ consciousness, whatever your idea of the creative wisdom of the universe is. Let's remember that now. I know that there is a power. And I know that each one of us is an expression of that love, of that ability to manifest in this world of form. So I speak a word of blessing today. I bless all the dreams, all the dreamers. 
all the purpose that we have for being here. And I call forth that energy of manifestation in each and every situation, knowing that there is a connection being made. There is a healing happening. All the right molecules within our bodies are going to the right places for healing. Healing our body and the body of our affairs. That whatever is going on, as we look to the solution, the solution is presented in a miraculous, wonderful way and an identifiable way that we can act upon in our lives. I bless anyone, anywhere who has ever asked for prayer, be it spoken or written or typed or perhaps in the subconscious regions of the mind where we just said, help me. And as we reach out, something within us reaches in and says, yes, absolutely yes. I know that that power that created everything that is, is in the midst of all of our thoughts. And as we allow it to work in our lives, miracles are the everyday happening for us. So I claim the miracles right now. Say, thank you. Thank you, thank you, divine, infinite wisdom of all well-being. Thank you in advance for the truckloads of good that are happening for each one of us right now. For there is so much more happening than we can even conceive, but we know that that energy of knowledge, as we turn to the solution, manifests in a way that is so beautiful. So we place these words directly into the law of mind. They are returned to us, filled to overflowing with manifestation, with solutions, with love. For truly love is all it is. So I let go and I let God be God in me, as me, is me. For this is the truth of all that is. As I release this treatment to the law, we affirm it by saying together, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, let's come back. Let's come back. <laughs>